Hey guys, Crispy Bacon back with another build for you. In this video, we'll be talking about a PvE Warlock build that I call Tolan's Curse. This build focuses on rapid grenade and super usage, allowing us to instantly regenerate our grenade and get some of the fastest super energy regen in the game. And this main combination is achieved by combining Bad Juju, two Demolitionist weapons, Nezrek Sin, Skull of Daira Hamkara, as well as Energy Converter. Bottom Tree Voidwalker as well as a few extra mods push this build to its absolute maximum potential, but first let's go over all of the items required to make this build yourself. In our primary slot we'll be using the Bad Juju Exotic Pulse Rifle, and it will be ideal for the catalyst to be completed for this build, so try to get that done if you can. In our energy slot we'll be using a Martyr's Retribution with Demolitionist. This can actually be farmed by using the Umbral Engram system that is live in Season of Arrivals. And in our heavy slot we'll be using a rocket launcher with Demolitionist and Ambitious Assassin. I am using the Heretic rocket launcher which is farmed from Altars of Sorrow. Now it's when we talk about our exotic armor pieces that things get a bit more interesting. We will be switching off between Nezarek Sin and Skull of Dire Ahamkara. The swap between these two is built into the core gameplay loop of this build. If you don't have one of these exotic helmets or you don't feel like swapping mid-game, you can actually just stick with one or the other because both of them will perform decently all by themselves. Nezarek Sin is going to give us faster ability regen as well as super regen when we kill enemies with any void damage. And Skull of Dire Ahamkar is actually going to give us enhanced damage resistance when we use our Nova Bomb. And any Nova Bomb kills are actually going to refund us super energy. And here is where our first synergy really comes into play. For those who are unaware, Bad Juju actually gives a stacking bonus to super regen and damage whenever we get kills. So by itself, Bad Juju is one of the best weapons in the game for quick super regen. So combining it with two different helmets that give us enhanced super regen when we get void kills, and then give us refunded super energy when we get Nova Bomb kills is really the perfect synergy. But again, just scratching the surface here, let's continue to talk about mods to see what this build can really do. On our helmets, we'll have Special Ammo Finder. On our arms, we'll have Grenade Launcher, Loader, and Energy Converter. On our chest piece, we'll have Overload Grenades and Stacks on Stacks. On our legs, we'll have Rocket Launcher, Scavenger, and Supercharged. And then on our bond, we'll have Innervation, Oppressive Darkness, and Taking Charge. As for stats, we'll want to prioritize Strength and Intellect. And then for our subclass, we'll be using Bottom Tree Voidwalker, known as Attunement of Hunger. So now that we have equipment out of the way, I think it's time that we talk about how we get our super so quickly and how we keep up this super gain throughout an entire activity. So the first way that we will get increased super gain is by using bad juju and killing enemies. And while we kill these enemies, every time we get a double kill, we're actually making an orb of light because the bad juju is masterworked. Each time we pick up one of these orbs of light, we actually gain two charges of light and we can have a maximum of four charges and that is attained through a combination of taking charge, supercharged, and stacks on stacks. And all of these charges of light end up fueling the mod called Energy Converter. It is the most important mod for this build, and what it means is that when we're below 50% of our super energy, when we use a grenade, it actually consumes all of our stacks of light to give us super energy. So the more charges of light we have, the more super energy we'll gain when we use that grenade. And again, this effect will only trigger if we have less than 50% of our super energy, and it won't allow us to go past 50%. So essentially, this is the fastest way to gain super energy before you have half of your super energy. But it's when we combo this with Skull of Dire Ahamkara that you can really see some crazy super energy regen. Right before you're about to throw your Nova Bomb, switch to Skull of Dire Ahamkara, kill a few enemies with that Nova Bomb, and you'll actually get a lot of super energy regained just by killing those enemies. Then right after this, as long as we have 4 charges of light, we can immediately use a grenade to get up to 50% of our super energy. Getting half of your super energy back immediately after using your Nova Bomb is really no joke here, and it makes this build really powerful when it comes to constant Nova Bomb usage. Then it's after using this combo that we can switch our helmet back to Nezarek Sin and start killing enemies with Void Grenades to get our super energy back even faster. And it's when we start talking about Nezarek Sin and Grenade usage that this build really starts to shine. So as mentioned before, we're using Bottom Tree Voidwalker, known as Attunement of Hunger. This subclass has a perk called Devour, which makes it so that after we either overcharge our grenade, kill an enemy with a melee attack, or kill an enemy with our Nova Bomb, 
Any kills after that fully regenerate our health and also give us grenade energy. Now, this is great in its own right because it keeps us healthy every time we get a kill with any weapon or ability. It gives us enhanced grenade usage because all of these kills are regenerating our grenade. And with Nezrex Sin on, all of these grenade and void kills are actually helping regenerate all of our abilities, including our super. But it's when we start talking about our energy and our heavy weapon that the neutral game of this build really starts to go crazy. Martyr's Retribution is a special grenade launcher in the fact that it is actually a wave frame. Wave frame grenade launchers function very similarly to Titan Thermite grenades in that they leave a long line of damage on the ground. This is important because with Martyr's Retribution you can get huge multi-kills by just shooting enemies as they run in a line towards you. But it's the perk Demolitionist that really lets us put this thing to use. So when we combine the huge multi-kills that this weapon is capable of, Demolitionist and Devour, we are able to get our grenade ability back immediately just by using one grenade. But even more so, when we throw a grenade, it automatically reloads the Martyr's Retribution, which means that we can take turns throwing a grenade, shooting Martyrs, getting our grenade energy back immediately, and then throwing another grenade to skip that reload animation. This allows us to very easily spam AoE damage, and each of these grenades, remember, is letting us charge our super faster thanks to Nezarek's Sin. And if you have a masterworked Martyr's Retribution, you can pick up all of the orbs that this creates to give us those charges of light that we were talking about earlier. Additionally, all of these perks of Demolitionist transfer over to our Rocket Launcher. Rocket Launcher kills will help us regenerate our grenade, which we can then throw to automatically reload the Rocket Launcher, and any kills with that grenade will proc Nezarek Sin, giving us faster super regen. But what's really incredible is when we combine Demolitionist with Ambitious Assassin. Any multi-kills with our rocket launcher actually loads two rockets into the magazine, meaning we can shoot two rockets back to back without having to reload. But after we shoot those two rockets, we can actually throw a grenade, which again, because of Demolitionist, allows our rocket launcher to reload automatically, allowing us to skip a reload animation for three rockets in a row. This causes some serious damage to both bosses and groups of mobs, and also gives us more ability regen, which we can then use for our Nezarek Sin. So just a few closing tips here. The best time to use bad juju is when you either run out of special ammo or enemies aren't grouping up closely, meaning that Martyr's Retribution is not the best choice for that engagement. Additionally, if you can stack the Nezarek Sin effect up to about 20 seconds when using your grenades, that's a great time to switch over to bad juju and start racking up kills. Because remember, the Abyssal Extractor's perk on the Nezarek Sin doesn't actually ramp up super energy over time. It's simply a timer that counts down, giving you the same amount of super energy and ability energy regen per second. Also, if you're going for boss damage at the end of an encounter, make sure to throw a grenade at that boss before throwing your Nova Bomb, because Oppressive Darkness will give you a huge damage buff to your Nova Bomb. And there's no worries about getting your grenade back, because you can easily just proc Devour once more, get your grenade back, use that grenade to activate Energy Converter, and get a lot of your super energy back immediately. But hey, I think that will about do it for this video. There was a lot of information, so I really appreciate you sticking around and listening to the end. I've been doing quite a bit more streaming lately, so I'd really appreciate it if you check me out here on YouTube or follow me over on Twitch. Also, make sure to join up on the Discord. We do a lot of build talk over there, and we'd love to have you. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.
We thank you, Guardian, and we will never forget. <laughs>